morning. <laughs> we want to welcome you this morning to the Brandon District Board of Directors meeting for today, August 3rd, 2016. The entire court makes presence to have the forum. Please join us in prayer. Thank you, Judge. Let us pray. Father God, we give you thanks for a great day that you've given us today, Lord. Uh, just we continue to uh, to ask for wisdom and direction and all the decisions that have to be made today, Lord. Continue to provide that that uh, that wisdom to this judge and four commissioners that you have appointed, Lord. They have a daunting task in this great county, Lord. Uh, be with them. Uh, all the decisions that they make, uh, they may be positive, they may uh, be uh, something that... Uh, helps this county progress, Lord. Uh, continue to provide the same wisdom uh, to myself, my staff, and uh, to all the leaders of this county, Lord. I ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Morning, Judge, Commissioners, and uh, citizens. Um, for the record, Kennedy Fletcher, citizen of FAR. First, I'd like to thank uh, um, my Precinct 2 Commissioner. I like the way the county's set up because you have one person, you know, you can uh, pester on things. And he keeps his office open all the time. And uh, there might be a little bit of wait, but, uh, you know, you get uh, input there. Uh, right now, there's been a consideration for developing the... Uh, stormwater detention area that's north of the administrative buildings. Uh, by law, it's required. Uh, it's the EPA uh, federal law. And I would like to keep it, and so would the neighbors, as a walking trail. They've, they've already been out there, uh, you know, since it was built, actually, trespassing on county land. So we'd like to have a resolution, which... Um, I've, I've made up, and, and I'll get all your emails and, and be uh, forwarding that resolution to you. But uh, before the uh, citizens that live in Los Marineros and FAR subdivision uh, that have pounded out the path around the detention area start pounding on the Precinct 2 office building saying, hey, where's, where's a more comfortable walking surface which can be done real easily just by dumping wood chips uh, with little uh, taxpayer input. Now, one thing came up recently. Um, I happened to be uh, uh, visiting the office, uh, you know, trying to keep up on the progress, and the progress has been pretty rapid because the um, uh, officers from the uh, I Road facility were over. And sorry, but I'm sort of uh, uh, insistent that it, it remain like a wildlife. Uh, there was a brainstorming session, and uh, one idea was to make it in a soccer field, but we've got to kick that idea out of everybody's mind because the soccer field, first of all, this is a, a swamp-like conditions. There's, it's a marsh and a, it's a wildlife habitat and we need more green, you know, less uh, screaming kids. And uh, I'm so cold up in I don't want to pay the electrical bill to light the thing up and to develop it and everything. And you're going to have a definite noise complaint because the neighbors in that uh, area of FAR can already hear the, the city of FAR baseball complex that's even uh, more located, uh, farther located. So, you know, all politics is local, and, and uh, I just want to make you aware of that. And uh, to stop the idea of the soccer field, uh, we're starting to circulate a petition, but don't worry. It's not going to have any numbers on it or the word percentage. It's, it's just that we don't want soccer field. Uh, so that's uh, what I want to bring to you from the city of FAR. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, I say my, uh, I'm Marta Sanchez, and I'm here representing La Unión del Polentero. And I'm just here because I wanted to thank Commissioner Cuellar uh, and uh, Mr. Cecil for a really uh, productive meeting that we had this past month, uh, the, last week, uh, in your office, Commissioner Cuellar. Uh, it, was, well, it, it definitely um, helps to be more transparent and also for people to know what's going on with the projects that are, uh, that are that they're waiting for, right? And so definitely it's very, uh, it's very good communication 
and we would like to continue this communication with the drainage district to be kind of like a like a regular thing that maybe every three months we can really establish this kind of communication and, and check all the different projects that are going on in the different areas where people are waiting for these projects to uh, style that they have. So thank you so much for Commissioner Cuellar for hosting us uh, and thank you Mr. Zassin for, uh, for attending too and for the information. And I know that uh, he continues to work on the, on the website which has been one of the things that we've been uh, focused on and so we appreciate all the cooperation and we continue to looking forward to these meetings every two months. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on to our consent agenda. Are there any concerns? Uh, on consent, no, sir. There are not any concerns. Second. Those in favor, <coughs> say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item five. Thank you, sir. Discussion in Dow County drainage, drainage projects, maintenance, and operations. Um, yes, we, we, we met with uh, uh, several residents in Precinct 1, and, and the idea is to carry those same meetings uh, countywide. Uh, to meet in the various precincts and talk about some of the rural drainage development projects and some of the bond projects and, and also just in general some of the drainage improvements that we're doing to our system beyond the bond projects. There's a lot of activity that's taking place. Um, so we're having these meetings and we'll be working uh, uh, to coordinate with your office, the precinct offices, uh, these meetings uh, to better inform all the residents are, are of the areas of what we're doing. With your, with, uh, putting together a presentation? We, yes, sir. Uh, for the mo this morning, as a matter of fact, I was doing the last review on uh, on the 23 bond projects. I'm uh, putting a table together to identify the bond projects with the summaries that we have in place. Uh, we got some some good information, good feedback uh, in our meeting regarding the structure and how to lay it out to to uh, make it more accessible and, and easier to present. So we're working on that um, right. to do that. Uh, we, we have also been looking at the. Uh, evaluation and maintenance of our system and one of the things that we've been looking at is the possibility of, of putting our our uh, main floodwater channel which starts east of 490 all the way to uh, FM uh, 1420 right before we enter into the ranch uh, out for bids for maintenance uh, we're kind of evaluating that and it's about a 34 mile stretch uh, we're looking at the section that's there and see what our investment currently is versus what it would be put it out uh, for for uh, a bid, so that that's still ongoing in that analysis, but uh, based on the numbers we're seeing, we're probably going to put that out to bid uh, and, and see what uh, what numbers we, we get back compared to our, our cost, maintenance cost, because that's an outstretched area uh, of, of the eastern portion of our county, so that will allow us to concentrate more in some of the urbanized areas where our ditches do uh, cross uh, and, and, and be a little more efficient in our maintenance as well and operations that we're doing so um, that'll be forthcoming uh, we're still evaluating that we're hopeful that by the end of the year we'll put that together so uh, that's right, what sir. we have going on right now so okay I had an item six uh, thank you uh, on item six there'll be uh, no action on this judge we're still working with legal counsel and uh, should bring it back at the next board meeting Seven. Item seven, uh, requesting approval to submit uh, remediation division correspondence identification form to Texas Commission of Environmental Quality as it relates to the former firing range berm located at 902 North Doolittle and approval for district operations manager to sign. Uh, we're basically looking at the, uh, the removal of part of the dirt that we have. It was the old uh, firing range on our site. We're to the point now that we're going uh, to file the proper application with TCQ to start that process. So part of it will be removed, and the other part, once it's done and approved, we'll be able to distribute and spread among the site itself, which will allow us to expand our parking area and uh, 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 parking for our, our workers and also uh, some of our equipment and, and so forth. So move just uh, need approval for this. Second. Those in favor, <coughs> say aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you. Item 8, request an authority to advertise an approval of procurement packet, legal notice, specifications, draft, contract, et cetera. As attached here too for Dow County Drains District Number One, concrete mix and related products delivered or pickup options. RFP number ACDD 1-16-042-0914, including the re-advertisement of project in the event no bids are received and project is still required. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item nine: requesting authority to advertise an approval of procurement packet, a legal notice, specifications, draft contract, etc. As attached here too for Dow County Drains District Number One, inlets, manholes, and related items. 
RFB number ACDD 1-16043-0914, including the re-advertisement of project in the event no bids are received and project is still required. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, item 10, requesting authority to advertise and approval of procurement packet eight legal notice specifications draft contracts headed as a test here too for Dell County District Number 1, Hauling Services of Construction Materials, RFP number ACDD 1-16044-0914, including the re-advertisement of project in the event no bids are received and project is still required. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 11, uh, requesting approval to reject bids received for the Project Kenyon Road and Mile 17 Area Drainage Improvement Project, RFP number ACDD 1-16-023-0615, and ratification of authority to re-advertise with the revised plans and specifications developed and drafted by Drain District Project Engineer Jose Saldivar, a new RFP number ACDD 1-16-045-0914. We were able to, uh, uh, we put this project originally out to bid. It was one of the areas that was greatly affected in Precinct 4 during this last storm event. Uh, we were doing some pipe work or post pipe work and everything, had it all coordinated and uh, bid it out. But then in the process, we were approached by a landowner uh, that uh, was willing to donate about 10 acres worth of property for a drainage ditch, which a drainage ditch uh, has a greater impact than actual pipe work. So we're uh, basically rejecting the bids that we have received on this project, and then we're going to be fulfilling the, the need for that drainage area to serve the existing <coughs> subdivision that, uh, that's underwater or that was affected in the last rain event uh, with this new drainage project that was uh, designed and, and created by the drainage district. So we're going to put this out to bid for the crossings in the district will be excavating the ditch, so it's a bigger impact for the area. So uh, I ask for approval on this. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. And, and Commissioner Palacios, I guess we, we can coordinate with your office now yeah. to, to meet with the residents because we had yeah, a meeting. We'll do last the public time. meeting there on site. Yes, sir. We will do that, sir. I'll, I'll reach, reach out to your office on that, sir. Um, item 12, requesting approval of change order number one with Texas uh, Cordia Construction LLC in the amount of $107,867.50 with additional 10 days as recommended by project engineer. Tez Infrastructure Group, construction contract number ACDD 1-16-006-0426, J09 Drain Improvements, Phase 2, Construction, Rio Grande Care Road to North Main Drain, with approval for ACDD 1 General Manager to sign. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item 13, request an authority to advertise and approval of procurement packet, a legal notice, specifications, draft contracts, et cetera, as attached here to for Dow County Drainage District number one, type D, hot mix asphalt, RFB number ACDD 1-16-046-0914, including the rear advertisement of project in the event no bids are received and project is still required. Approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item 14, we do have a closed session item, sir. Pursuant to 551, 071, and 072 of the Texas Government Code, need a motion to proceed to executive session. So move. Second. 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 Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We're back in open session. Uh, on special items, uh, 15. Yes, sir. 15. Make sure. Um, open session 15A, real estate acquisition, uh, no action. 15B, pending potential litigation. Um, item C, uh, we'll proceed as, as directed by the board. No action. Get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. I know I'm not supposed to speak. But the format and that Raul, I guess, whoever decided to put the subdivisions in this kind of format, we appreciate it a whole lot. It's really great. We'll be thanking him as soon as we get to it. Okay. <laughs> it's very, very good. Easy to read. At this time, we're going to be convening a regular meeting of the Adato County Commissioner's Court for today, August 23rd, 2016. Present, the entire court being present, we have a quorum. Please join us in our Pledge of Allegiance. 
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you for the little rain that you sent to refresh the earth. Thank you for all the blessings that you give us. We ask for blessings on all of us here and bless our county and bless our nation and bless our families. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. 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 Send agenda. Any concerns? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Judge. If uh, I ask the court to um, to approve the consent agenda without uh, at this time items two C, two G, and eleven D. Three C. Move for approval without those three. Second. Uh, three C. I'm sorry. Three C. Three C. Three C. Yes. Eleven D. And which other? And two G. And two G. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Judge Commissioners, I'd like for the court to take action on, on the consent agenda item 3C with the clarification. Uh, it is for the uh, the transfers for the nuisance abatement program. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. I'm asking the court not to take any action on item 2G. And on item 2D, there is a clarification. The contract number is C-08-417-12-09. That's on 11D. On 11D, not 2D. I'm 11D. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm stuck on 2 for whatever reason. 11D. I could have a motion to that effect? Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Thank you, sir. All right. Under item 5A, we have Ms. Yvonne Ramon. Our elections administrator. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. Item 5A is good morning, Proc man. good morning. Proclamation declaring September as Valley Voter Awareness Month to encourage Hidalgo County residents to register to vote for the November 8, 2016 general election and to exercise their right to vote with a presentation by ACT, which is the Advocacy Alliance Center of Texas. Act now. If I will have um, Alberto Morales and Carlos Martinez, who are the two members of this just incredible organization that has supported the Hidalgo County Elections Department now for so many years. And these two gentlemen have done an incredible job. So we will have them speak in just a minute if I may proceed with the proclamation. Proclamation declaring September 2016 as Valley Voter Awareness Month. Whereas the framers of the Constitution established the United States is a representative democracy that relies on civic engagement. And whereas the Rio Grande Valley has historically had low voter turnout, only four of 10 people vote in South Texas, while six out of 10 vote in other parts of the state. And whereas across the Rio Grande Valley, there is an urgent need to increase participation in the electoral process. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court hereby proclaims September 2016 as Valley Voter Awareness Month in Hidalgo <coughs> County and encourages all citizens to exercise their right to vote and to promote participation in the electoral process to their friends, families, and neighbors in local, state, and national elections. Dated this 23rd day of August, 2016. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Now I present to you Mr. Alberto Morales. <coughs> good thank morning, you so much. Good morning. Hi, Judge and Commissioners. And first of all, thank you so much for having us uh, this morning and letting us present before you. Uh, my name is Albert Morales. I'm the project coordinator for ACT. Um, we are a nonprofit organization that has been working diligently to increase voter turnout throughout the last four years. And last year, the 84th State Legislature passed a 10-year resolution uh, that was proposed by our organization to designate September as Valley Voter Awareness Month. We're here once again today to invite entities in both the public and private sector, educational, co cultural, and religious institutions, as well as grassroots organizations and the media to contribute to the movement of increasing voter awareness and participation and to encourage the community to register and vote consistently throughout elections. Uh, last year, we organized a uh, Valley Voter Awareness Month kickoff 
where there were over 100 community partners um, present from across the Rio Grande Valley. All of the four county governing bodies passed res resolutions in, observ in observance of HCR 119. And the goals that we accomplished through the event were increased participation from existing partnerships, recruitment of new partners to participate in Axe Voter Initiative, and the establishment of an, of an ambassador program with various organizations to get out the vote within their existing structures. This year, ACT will announce the kickoff of Valley Voter Awareness Month with all of its media partners at a media mixer being held on September 1st, and will roll out a comprehensive digital campaign to promote voter awareness, registration, and participation. We would like for Hidalgo County as a community partner to expand voter education and nonpartisan get out the vote opportunities among the various employee departments and the rest of the community. In the last major election, only 24% of registered voters cast the ballot, and we feel that there's much more potential for the residents of the Rio Grande Valley to exercise their civic rights and responsibilities. ACT is available to provide any support to any community organization that wishes to host uh, efforts promoting Valley Voter Awareness Month. Some of the efforts may include voter registration drives, voter education presentations, pledge to vote campaigns, or simply posting signage and distributing internal communications to create positive voter participation reminders. Uh, if anyone would like additional information, they can always contact our office uh, or visit our, our website. Uh, we just want to thank the commissioners for the support that they've given us throughout the years. Uh, we really want to make uh, a big impact in this uh, important election that's coming up in November. So we ask for your continued cooperation and support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. By the way, you've got good commercial. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, we're, we're just about to roll out a new uh, PSA for this election season, so uh, look out for that one. It should, it be in the, it should be in the, in the media outlets pretty soon. Thank you so much. Can we take a photo? Item 5B. Check, check, check. Can we take a picture? Agenda item number 5B. Bobby? Or, or is it Mike? Sorry. Michael Leo County Judges. 5B is appointment of board member to represent the County of Hidalgo on the La Via Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone Board of Directors. Uh, we entered this interlocal back in 2012 with La Via. Uh, things have changed that they're, they're not sure what the direction is going to go, so they're asking us to appoint our board members so we can go to the church board meeting so they can just kind of direction of what they see, how they see this project f moving forward or if they see this project moving forward. So I think we'll have more information once that happens, but for now we just need to... Uh, motion for AC Quiet, being the fact that it's in its precinct. Second. Uh, those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Can you rescind your motion? <laughs> <laughs> All right, item six, constable. Judge Commissioner. Precinct two. With your permission, I will uh, present for item uh, uh, constable Kansu. Uh, item six B, he's asking under section, uh, Texas Local Government Code, section 86.012. The appointment, uh, approval and appointment of Alfredo Mesa and Francisco Cruz as reserve deputy constable. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commission. Item 7, our Sheriff's Office. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Good morning, sir. Captain Raul Cantu on behalf of our Hidalgo County Sheriff, Mr. Eddie Guerra. 
Item 7A1, acceptance of, do of the donation of one 2002 E350 ambulance from the Dow County Emergency Service Foundation and upon acceptance for the assignment of asset number and inclusion in the HCSO inventory list. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 2, acceptance of donation of 10 automatic external defibrillators from the Dow County Emergency Service Foundation and upon acceptance for the assignment of uh, asset number for each and uh, inclusion in the SSO inventory list. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I have with me today uh, Commissioner and Judge Program Coordinator Deputy Daniel Fuentes and the Dow County Emergency Service Foundation Representative uh, David De Los Santos. Just give you a brief uh, synopsis and in case uh, that you have any questions. Good morning, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. Um, I want to thank you all, first off, for accepting, you know, this donation on behalf of the Sheriff's Office. Uh, the ambulance is something that we're going to be used. We have a very unique program at the Sheriff's Office. We're training in-house EMTs, and we're also working with other agencies to train officers as first responders. So this will help in that training. Uh, the donation of the ambulance. The 10 AEDs, that's something that's going to be divided amongst the east and west sides of the county. We put out two tactical medics and EMTs and patrol officers so they can better respond and provide better care if there is a cardiac emergency. Awesome. Anyone have any questions for me? No, just a commendation to, I know Mr. Ponce uh, and his group of guys is obviously generous of them to donate such an item for the sheriff's office. I just obviously give you commendation for y'all's consideration. Thank you. Judge, Commission, my name is David De Los Santos, again with Hidal County EMS. We're an honor to be part of the training program for Hidal County uh, Sheriff's Department. Mr. Daniel Fuentes has done an outstanding job. We're working together for the betterment of the community and putting out these uh, pieces of equipment, especially the defibrillators. Uh, like uh, Daniel Fuentes was saying, sometimes somebody goes down, the Sheriff's Departments are there. Early defibrillation saves lives. Thank you. Yes, Thank sir. you, sir. <coughs> Gentlemen. Item B1, approval of memorandum of, of uh, understanding between the Dow County Sheriff's Office and other local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies to cooperate and collaborate in the Rio Grande Valley, Texas Anti-Gang Center, RGV TAG. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Two authorization for a county sheriff as authorized law enforcement official to sign the agreement. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item 8, our executive office. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Item 8A is uh, appointment of a Civil Service Commission member. This is an appointment uh, for Commissioner Precinct 2. Um, Commissioner? Uh, Julian Ibarra. Julian Ibarra. Okay, so the uh, Judge Commissioners, uh, after, a, after a motion and a vote, that uh, appointment will be effective. Uh, immediately, and then Judge uh, will make arrangements for the uh, for the oath uh, to be taken. All right. Move for for action for that. Uh, yes. yes. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item eight uh, eight a two is reappointment of civil service commission member uh, for Commissioner Precinct Four, and that member would be Mickey uh, Rabinovich. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item B is appointment of representative and alternative to the Amigos and Via Board for the 2016-2017 uh, term. Uh, judge? Uh, who's there right now? Um, actually, you know what, Judge? I, I'm sorry. I, I, we, we go through, we rotate. This is precinct two. Um, that, Tito used to be the one. Yes, we right. That's why we have to put it on there. Uh, so... Uh, I would recommend uh, Joseph. Uh, Joseph. <laughs> Eddie. I would recommend uh, you old enough. Commissioner <laughs> Precinct Two or uh, Commissioner or or, or or your designee and an alternate. Okay. Do yeah. I need to name the designee and the alternate right now? Yes. Uh, uh, unless you'd like. Just give Don't me some name time. <laughs> okay. So, well, uh, because right now under the under this term, uh, as it was in the past with Commissioner, right now under this term is yourself. And uh, uh, Mr. Garza Armando of your office is the alternate, but the term has come up again. Okay. Can you give me to the next meeting? Yes, sir. I will. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. But we can appoint him, right? 
<laughs> yeah, I'm just going to get some designees and alternates. Okay, so no action today. Uh, item C, uh, I'm requesting approval of fuel reimbursement in the amount of $22.05 to Mr. Ramirez, Martin Ramirez, that is. Uh, the fuel car, fuel, our fuel car was not working. This is always with authority of the county treasurer to issue check after review and auditing procedures are completed by our county auditor. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D is a request uh, from the Edinburgh Pro Life Committee to utilize the open forum area, uh, which is on our courthouse grounds. For a prayer rally, this would be on Saturday, October 1st, 2016, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Again, Judge Commissioners, this is the uh, open forum area at the courthouse. Motion approved. Approved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 9, our human resources. <laughs> Morning, Judge Commissioners. Carlos Figueroa, Executive Office, presenting for human resources. Judge Commissioners, item 9A. Uh, with a couple of corrections, that, that's for Precinct 4. It's for their drainage improvement uh, program. It's a project under Precinct 4. We're asking discussion, consideration, and approval of the following personnel action effective next full pay period. Uh, Precinct 4 is asking to delete slot number 0034, equipment operator 2, current salary 31418, and to create slot 0037. And there's a correction there. The correct title is pipe layer fitter slash fitter. And the salary is a little off. It should be $28,644. Motion to approve second. with correction. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item two is approval to revise the salary schedule in, according, uh, in accordance with your action. Approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B is for the Texas AgriLive Extension Service. Uh, we're, it's a general fund. Uh, item, so we're requesting waiver of the budget amendment policy for personnel-related amendments. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And we're uh, asking number two, discussion, consideration, approval of the following personnel action effective 829. And the action is to delete slot number 0012, administrative assistant two, current salary $28,937, and to create slot 0015, program coordinator one, at a salary of 41200 Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item three is approval to waive the posting, hiring, and enrollment procedures to fill the program coordinator slot 15 pursuant to section 3.49 of the Civil Service Commission rules to be effective 8 29 2016. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item four is approval of the interdepartmental transfer. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And the last item on that, Judge Commission, is approval to revise the salary schedule in accordance with the Commissioner's Court action. Move for approval. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. That's all I have. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Thank you, sir. Uh, item 10, our health department. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Eddie Olivares, Hidalgo County Health Human Good morning, Services. Sir. sir, item uh, B1, uh, correction, A1, is requesting approval to accept the C. P.S. Ebola Grant Contract Amendment 2015-003624-01. The purpose of the amendment is to amend the certain contractual language increase the, and increase the award amount by 33700 and extend the contractual term to June 30th, 2017. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two is request and approval of the county <coughs> judge to e-sign the CPS Ebola contract amendment. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item three requesting the approval of certification of revenue at the amount of thirty-three thousand seven hundred dollars. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item four requesting approval of the budget and uh, budget appropriations. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B is health care funding district. Just for clarity, sir, this is, has to do with a hospital funding district involving the local preferred provider fund. So item B1, discussion and action cleaning without limited to health care funding district and or expenditures. There's no action there unless there's questions. And then on item two, sir, is that it's coming to that time where we need to draw for uncompensated care. The local hospitals are uh, have submitted their funding to be uh, collected and then 
transitioned over to the state and federal government to be multiplied, and that's what this action is. The discussion and consideration and the approval to draw down funds for demonstration year five, you see uncompensated payments, and the amount to be determined by HHSC instructions from the local uh, provider participation fund, the LPPF, with a statement uh, settlement due September the 9th, 2016. As of always, sir, we don't have the final figures that we won't have until next Thursdays when we get the figures, but we just need to get action going to get things to happen on this, sir. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval of no, item B is approval of certification of revenues as certified by county auditor from the LPPF and the amount to be determined by uh, the health HHS instructions, health and human services instructions. Sir, on this one, uh, we have as of right now, we have 27 million. $193,824.47 that are in the fund and have been collected. That is what's uh, transitioned to, that will be transitioning in order to the, to the state and the feds for multiplication. However, the state has given author, the federal government has given authorization to, uh, to use up to $48,241,427.37. By that is at the, at the will and the subject of the federal government to determine what they're going to do. And these are the dollars that are generated as a result of the efforts of the hospitals. The hospitals it's pay the fee. Money. Yes. This All is 100 percent right. hospital money that they pay the fee, and it's the four it's the hospitals in Hidalgo County. The biggest contributors are the five large hospitals that are the biggest contributors, sir. And how much are they generating, Ed? Uh, in fact, uh, generate as far as in a year, like over 70 million. They will, 72 million, I think, is what they put in over a year's time. Into That's it. what they put in? Yes, sir. And so they generate with a multiplier? Well, 72, 100, uh, about, about 160 in there, approximately. If you, uh, if you double it in awesome a third. Minutes. Yeah, give or take a few. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C is approval for the 2016 appropriation funds from the LPPF and the amount to be determined by Health and Human Services Commission. I gave you that figure already, but the final figure will be determined by the state and the federal government. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And we're expecting uh, all of this to be finalized by August the 25th and, and getting, getting all of that taken care of, sir, hopefully. Uh, item C, Indigent Health Care Program Discussion and Action, including but not limited to Indigent Health Care Program and or 1115 Waiver and Expenditures. There's no items there unless there's any questions, sir. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, Eddie. Thanks. <coughs> item uh, 11, Urban County. Good morning, Judge. Uh, morning, Commissioners, P.R. Avila with Urban County. Item 11A, subject to compliance with House Bill 1295, when and if applicable, the Irving County program on behalf of the city of Granjeno is requesting authority to purchase park recreational equipment supplies to the Hidalgo County's membership participa participation with by board approved vendor extra play in the amount of three thousand three hundred and ten dollars and twenty five cents. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Item twelve, our public defender. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Good morning. Pa Patricia Loya for the Public Defender's Office. Uh, 12A, Agenda Item 55901, Discussion, Consideration, and Approval to Appoint Alicia Nicole Garza, UTR GVE student as volunteer public defender intern for the period of August 29, 2016 through January 13, 2017. Move for approval. Second. Okay. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. If you have any questions for her, she is right here. <laughs> well, thank you for your commitment to the county. Of course, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Good luck. Good we take a vote? Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I have 13, our auditor's office. Good morning. Uh, we're asking approval to transfer fund balance of $222,812.29 from Retired Debt Service Fund 1435, the Refunding Bond Series 2005, to Debt Service Fund 1438, Refunding Bond Series 2007, and Debt Service Fund 1439, Certificates of Obligation Series 2009. Approved. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 14, our Planning Department. 
Team Jason. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. T.J. Adelman, for the record. In your absence, I want to make sure you're aware you've already gotten one compliment in your new process <laughs> of the information that you're now providing for us. Well, great. Thank you. We appreciate right. that. Good job. Thank you. Okay, uh, first item is um, there's three subdivisions for preliminary approval. The first one's Los Tres Encino Subdivision in Precinct 3. It's a four-lot subdivision. It's in a flood zone X. There is drainage via reconstructed roadside ditch. Um, it was approved by the City of Mission. There is water via Sherryland Water Supply, and there is sanitary sewer by the City of Alton, and the streets are paved. We're recommending approval. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Can you tell us, to be able to properly read it, what does flood zone X mean? Flood zone X is a moderate to minimal risk of a flood zone. It's a, a two, uh, point two of a percent chance of inundation in any given year, so it's a very, very low uh, probability of inundation. But if it rains like it rains in Louisiana, <laughs> that is a, <laughs> <you're> in trouble. <laughs> a thousand year rain. Wow. So all all these um, all these subdivisions are the, are in as X, B, or C. Uh, there aren't any zone A's, and we no longer approve subdivision in zone A's, which are the higher risk uh, areas. Just for the record. And A and the other one is which one? Well, any A. Um, but all these subdivisions are, are moderate to minimal, minimal risk. Which is X and what? B, They're B, X, B, C's. Are, are for, that's very good. Okay. All right, sir. So A is the only one that. Yeah. Any of the A's, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, we do. If we do uh, receive a subdivision that is in a flood zone A, we require the engineer to take it out of the uh, flood zone via fill or uh, letter of map amendment. Maybe the. Um, the map is probably maybe incorrect, so we require coordination with FEMA and the engineer to get it out of the flood zone. All right, for example, that subdivision has four lots, and uh, it's in flood zone X, and the drainage is going, it's not connecting to one of our drainage arteries, but it's, it's the water is going into a reconstructed roadside ditch? Yes, sir. They're regrading the ditch to ultimately get to an outfall. Uh, there are lots that are fronting the, the existing county road, so there really isn't any. Well, actually, um, these lots are not half acre, like quarter acre lots. They're big lots. They're bigger lots, half acre or greater. Um, but the system is basically they're just facing the roadway. Where, uh, it's a small subdivision, so there isn't much that they can do except to regrade uh, the roadside ditch and get it to the. All right, sir. Go ahead. The next subdivision is Lago Delta Acre Subdivision in Precinct One. It's so a 13 lot subdivision. It's also in the zone X. Uh, the drainage is reconstructed roadside ditch and drain ditch widening. Uh, it's in the rural area of the county. It was approved by North Alamo Water Supply and the sewers by septic tank system. The streets are paved. We're recommending approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next subdivision is the Lantana Acres number eight subdivision in Precinct One. It's a 50 lot subdivision. It's in the zone X. Uh, the drainage is via storm drain drainage pipe system. And ditch widening, uh, waters by North Alma water supply, septics by uh, sewer by septics, and the streets are paved. The only thing I ask, uh, couldn't we put the developer in case we we don't know the developer and we have to, you know, abstain or something? We would, is there any way to know? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, th there should be an affidavit that prepared for that. No, no, but I mean, you're not. We're not talking. We're not saying. We're not even saying there who the developer is. Okay, we can include that in, in future agendas, Commissioner. I thought that was Joe Olivares. Is that not? Yeah, our, I mean, we uh, thought, but I mean, it didn't say here. Yeah. It just, right. just, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it's it's on there. Three grandes. Uh, yeah. His personal name's not on there, but yeah. that's uh, yeah, J the J Joe D. Olivares, but they can put the developer in there. The right. actual name? Okay. Yeah. yeah, that'll make it easier for us. We'll to include that, sir. We have a conflict, a conflict or, or not. Yeah. Yes, sir, we'll include that. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 I have motion carried. You know, at 50, draining 50 lots, is just widening the ditch going to be enough? Well, they're they're connecting to the ditch. They're, that's their uh, uh, their means of uh, providing, I guess, their detention is to widen the, the so ditch. So like a, the ditch is acting like a detention pond? Correct. It's their, that's their additional uh, capacity via the widening of the ditch. Instead yeah, of having a ditch, pond on site lots. to maintain, we're having them the widen the ditch. Uh, all right, go ahead, sir. Uh, the next subdivisions are for final approval. Uh, Maravillas Estates Phase 1 in Precinct 1. It's an 80-lot subdivision in a flood zone B. Uh, 
the dirt drainage via storm drainage pipe system and ditch, ditch widening was approved by the city of Donna. There is water by North Alabama Water Supply and the sewers by Septics. The streets are paved. We're recommending approval. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Terry Palms number three, subdivision in Precinct 4. It's a seven lot subdivision in the zone X. Uh, drains via ro reconstructed roadside ditches approved by the city of Edinburgh. There is water by North Alamo Water Supply and there is sewer by septics. The streets are paved. Recommending approval. Approved. Those, those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. The next subdivision is San Jacinto States number nine, Precinct 1. It's a 28 lot subdivision in the zone X. There is drains via storm drainage pipe system and ditch widening. Was approved by the city of Wasico. There is water by uh, North Alamo Water Supply, sewer by Septics, and it is paved. Recommending recommend approval. Thanks. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next subdivision, San Patricio subdivision number one, uh, or precinct one, I'm sorry. 59 lot subdivision located in the zone X. Uh, drains by storm drainage pipe system and ditch widening. Was approved by the city of Donna. Water by North Alamo and uh, sewer by Septics. Approved. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next subdivision is our final approval of financial guarantee. Uh, Kenyon Vegas Ranches Precinct 4. Seven lot subdivision in the zone X. Uh, drains via storm drainage pipe system and ditch widening. Was approved by the city of Edinburgh. Water by North Alamo. And uh, financial guarantee for three septic systems. Recommending approval. Approved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next subdivision is Rio, uh, Rio Vegas Ranches Subdivision Precinct 4. 17 lot subdivision, uh, zone X, uh, drains via uh, reconstructed roadside ditch with outfall, approved by the city of Edinburgh. We're recommending approval. Approved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. The last subdivision is Ranchito Scodillo's phase two. It's a 43 lot subdivision in the zone X, uh, drains by a reconstructed roadside ditch to an outfall and approved by the city of Edinburgh. Recommending approval. Approved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Just for the commissioner's benefit and the public, the drainage district is the one that initially reviews the drainage. We have the engineers on staff. We work uh, with the developers and the engineers to try to develop a means to, to drain the subdivisions. The nearest outfall uh, is, is the current proposal that we have, and we are working with planning, and uh, we will be meeting to try to look at our drainage policy and see what we need to do to address some of the areas. For example, Precinct 3, uh, there's uh, a lot of uh, the developers have come to us and said, oh, how, how do we develop in the area where there's no outfall over there? So we're looking at ridge detention facilities. Uh, the, the district's investing in a ridge detention facility, 50 acres. It's going to service that area. Uh, so we're going to look at certain real detention facilities that we can expand on because eventually our system is, is going, it's growing into the west. It's just taking time to get there. Uh, we are creating partnerships with development community uh, as far as the district and, and the developers to continue to expand drainage. Uh, that's the, you know, the, the most effective way of doing it. So uh, we are cognizant of, of the fact that Precinct 3 is uh, development. It's slowed down a little bit because of no outfalls. Uh, but we are working uh, to, to find ways to, to continue that development. Uh, Mr. Adorno and his staff, does, they do a good job of making sure once we get the comments to them to follow up on the inspection processes and things of that nature during development. But the district is the one that's kind of uh, doing the reviews of drainage and all that uh, initially. So, um, And we found that uh, when those lots, as you were asking earlier, Judge, uh, those lots that are created that are fronting county roads, when they dedicate right of way, we ask them to excavate the roadside ditches uh, linearly to, to account for linear detention in our, in our right, right of way, uh, which, uh, which holds tremendous amount of water. And, and they're generating very little water because there's such big lots, as Commissioner Flores was saying, usually half acre or more, maybe an acre on these, on these particular ones. Uh, so what they're being, what be, what's being put on there traditionally is residential. When it gets to commercial construction, then we do require them an on-site detention on the lot itself before they discharge into the roadside ditches. So, and that, Mr. Arredondo, at the permit stage is when he looks at those issues. So there is a working relationship within the district and planning department to make sure these developments are, are, are providing the proper drainage up front and then during the approval process, uh, permitting process, depending on the type of use, uh, there are secondary measures in there to account for, for drainage. I remember when I first came into office many years ago, Y'all had bid it out or talked about building laterals 
Yes, sir. East and West. What happened to that? We do have a, we do have the original master plan that has been adopted. Uh, the '97 plan was is an antiquated plan, uh, Commissioner. Uh, there was one done in 2007, but it has been uh, it was not adopted by by the board. Uh, it was a study done for precinct one and four. No, but there was one in about 2000 or maybe. 2001, they did a study or? Well, there's, there was one in 97 and there's one in 2007 that was done for, for yeah. two. And I remember when I came in, it just happened. We don't have two and four. I can't find a study, but what I am going to be proposing to the board, and I'm, I'm looking at it, the possibility of developing a master plan to interconnect all these systems because uh, in order for the developer to know what how he can participate, we need to have an, an adopted plan to say this is where a ditch is coming, this is what the district's looking at doing. And then you know they can participate somehow to via dedication or something for linear detention. Ultimately, what we want is we don't want stagnant water. We want water to move, and we want to partner and make sure that we continue development, but we also uh, have the end users enjoy uh, their living conditions. So uh, we're working hand in hand with the development community to make sure that we we make that happen. So. And I will be coming to the board later uh, about the master plan uh, for the district because we do need an update. We haven't had one, a, a formal adopted update since really the night, the, the uh, 97 study. But yes, sir, that would be a great tool to use. Just kind of give an overview, Commissioner uh, and Judge, uh, of, of how the district's worked with, with uh, the planning uh, on, the, on the drainage portion of the project. So, okay. All right. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item uh, 15, precinct number two. <clears throat> Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Good morning, uh, sir. Come, come for you today uh, to seek approval for uh, an advanced uh, funding agreement with TechStop. Uh, item A1, um, precinct two regional linear park, approval of advanced funding agreement between Hidalgo County and Texas Department of Transportation for Hidalgo County precinct two regional linear park project phase one from San Antonio Street to Ridge Road in San Juan and Far Texas. Uh, that is CSJ0921-02-365 with authority for the county judge to sign the required documentation. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item A2, approval to issue check payable to the Texas Department of Transportation Trust Fund in the amount of $115,678 for the county's estimated share of direct state costs for preliminary engineering, environmental, and construction for the Alu County Precinct 2 Regional Linear Park Project with authority for the county treasurer to issue the check after review, audit, and processing procedures are completed by the county audit. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 16, our budget office. Morning, Judge Commissioner Sergio Cruz, Department of Budget Management. Uh, item 16A, uh, I believe we're going to take uh, no action on that interlocal. We'll bring that back, I guess, next week. All right. Uh, item 16B, discussion, consideration, and approval to submit fiscal year 2016 Texas Vine Reimbursement Maintenance Invoice in the amount of $6,928.83 uh, and the Texas Statewide Automated Victims Notification Service uh, County Verification of Continuing Production Records with authority for the county judge to sign the required documents. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Item 17, uh, purchasing. Lifted. Good morning, <coughs> Commissioners. Judge. You give her a break. Judge Commissioners. You can keep giving me a break. Break two. <laughs> uh, Lefty signs reporting for purchasing department. First item, 17A, Hidalgo County. It's presentation of sold bid receipt from Information Management Solutions uh, as tabulated herein, meeting all specifications requirements. Request for bids title, Hidalgo County, printing and mailing of postcards through project number 2016-23607-27 SMA. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item A2 is the same as last, we're bringing it back this week with the presentation of the final RFQ packet for the program manager in connection to the design and construction of the New Delta County Courthouse, which includes limited but not modification details as, as detailed by Commissioners Court in meeting of 8 9 
incorporated by Mr. Hawkins and Mr. Kaminsky, so as to proceed with advertisement of unless other changes requested of the packet, that is, qualification, scope of services, requirements, insurance, and grading sheets. Uh, Mr. Leo, Michael, did you have? All right. There, there are three, three issues that, that I believe we still need to address. Well, one of them I, we've already addressed and left kind of pending. Uh, the, the three issues that I've looked at are, number one, the issue of requiring uh, certification of some of these uh, on uh, the uh, uh, on the project, and number two, what what is meant by by being local, and is that going to be something we're going to be requiring? And number three was the insurance, which we agreed uh, we were trying to get. Uh, Mr. Kamiski, our insurance consultant, was requesting. Uh, or his opinion was, uh, his recommendation was that we get $10 million, but we, uh, uh, the court uh, was, con was taking into consideration the potential cost for that $10 million, and we decided that, uh, that we would be looking at uh, a minimum of $5 million with the option to go up to $10 million or uh, our, our or whatever figure we felt would be appropriate, depending on what the cost uh, involved would be, and whether or not it would be our cost prohibitive or not to bring it up to, to a minimum of ten or to at least ten million, as was being suggested uh, and recommended by our consultant. But that's for project, right? That's for the project manager. Yeah, because uh, they can have insurance, but they can have it where it can be like oh, it's project. Right. I know it's project it's specific. Yeah, dedicated project. dedicated project. Correct. Is this the proposed evaluation? All right, and those are the three areas that I think we're, we're still lacking, and we needed to to address the insurance. We've already we know what we're going to be doing. Uh, the the issue of certification. Um, I believe the CEO just passed out the uh, the evaluation form that we'll be using. On are you talking on the relevant experience? I think uh, we removed. We deleted the presently. Presently. This is what the consultant provided. Are you all okay with this grading form? The consultant uh, was recommending Mr. Hawkins. five points for certification, was he not? It's scratched out, Judge. Yes, the, the way he has it here is on three relevant experiences, saying a total of ten will be considered only to be around the areas of relevant program management experience, relevant program management experience on courthouse. Is that correct? Right. Yes. So he's recommending that we remove that. I don't think he no, recommended I think a, that. Well, there's a blue line. Yeah, I think his list. original recommendation was that's how it came clean. But feedback that he got from one of the workshops is what led to scratching it out and moving the five points down. At one so of the workshops, uh, uh, it was stated that uh, there would that that they didn't certify these kind of uh, of uh, individuals, and it turns out that uh, and we went ahead and directed Mr. Leo to look into the issue of certification. And there are two organizations that come that do actually certify. Uh, that there's the PMI, the Project Management Institute, and uh, there's the CMAA uh, that uh, get involved in certifying and looking at the qualifications, the educational background, the experience of the companies that are applying, and um, uh, and. I, I feel we we should we should consider uh, requiring that uh, uh, that we have or at least a, requ a requirement that they be certified and that we be awarding uh, those five points. Put that back into the uh, into the evaluation sheet uh, for companies that uh, are applying or will apply that are certified. I guess I'm just trying to clarify. This was what he recommended? This is what he recommended. So he has it scratched off, though. 
he scratched it out because that was the the feedback that he got from the workshop prior. Uh, so he sent this revised. As yeah, I was just confused. I, I see it scratched out here. And, and actually, it turned out what we had sent him way back was the original pool that we work off of for construction management services. And in the original pool and the evaluation criteria, that was already there also. So it just kind of carried over. And these companies, before they certify, they look into the individual or the, the applicant's uh, experiences uh, and the education and into construction management, time management, uh, chemical, all different types of engineering uh, background and architecture, and uh, and they provide an examination before they're certified and where they're tested on project management experience, time management, contract administration, quality management, professional practice, and safety and risk management. And they require. Uh, a certain amount of experience in that in these particular areas, which we we should consider and, and uh, so how how are we going to score those five points? What what certifications are going to be required? <clears throat> well, the only two companies that I understand are involved in certifying are the PMI Project Management Institute and the CMAA. I'm not sure of any others. Michael, are you investigating any others? Is, is this going to is it going to change again, or well, that's pretty much the, uh, like we said last time. Those are the two that we came across at GSA General Services Administration. You know, takes into consideration when they're looking on. But are you looking for anything else? I mean, is there anything else not out there? Because we've, we've been working on this for three months, and these things just keep popping up as we go on. If this is all we're doing, let's move forward. Let's put it out. Not that we. The You're not looking for ones. anything else. Okay. That's what you want to add to that, uh, Yes. I mean, the so, the, so then we'll do five, five, ten, on the relevant Double. experience. Second. Well, Judge, why, why can't I mean, there's other counties in the state that's built courthouses. Why couldn't we just follow their lead? I mean, I'm pretty sure there's bigger counties. I mean, bigger courthouses than this. I mean, we're spending so much time on this. Well, we're, we're trying to, and uh, that's why we hired the consultant. Uh, Turns out the consultant's recommendation is where we're now coming back to and accepting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, there's a lot of counties that built four houses, and I just want to see how they, they did it, you know. <coughs> right. So, will we proceed with this? Yeah, All right, those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Well, with, with the changes? With the yes. changes. Yes. Now, the, the other issue, the last issue that we have looked at was what do we do with local? How do we go about awarding points for being local? And uh, it turns out that we, there's a statute that prohibits us from looking, well, I'm going to let Steve explain it, from looking at whenever we're dealing with professional services, we can't, we look at qualifications, we look at experience. Uh, as opposed to whenever we're dealing with contractors, construction issues, there we can uh, consider and request that uh, we have some local people involved and that we provide some uh, uh, some points for, for hiring local people. But when we're looking strictly at the professional, which is what we're doing here, Steve, uh, have, can, you, can you address that issue? I can kind of walk you through it. There's two relevant statutes. The first one's out of the local government code. I believe that one's in front of you. That is section 271.908. And the other relevant statute called the government code, section 2254, the Professional Service Procurement Act. I'm directing your attention to the local government code, section 271.908. And basically, you start with B. That's your authority to contract with. Uh, a private entity to act as your law, law use the word agent in the design, development, financing, maintenance, operation, important word, or construction, including oversight and inspection of a civil works project, which 
I believe that's what we're doing here with a courthouse. And then if you look at C, the local government entity contract in this section, important word shall, select a private entity based on the private entity's qualifications and experience. Qualification experience is the same language used in section 254 of the government code and also as a reference in D to that the selected private entity shall comply with two all laws related to procurement of professional services under chapter 254 government code. So this section of the local government code ties directly into the government code section and this section of the local government code is your authority to hire such a private entity uh, that would be uh, doing, among other things, oversight and inspection of a civil works project. So am I correct that your opinion is that we cannot award any points for being local when we're considering the issue of uh, evaluating the program manager? Well, the question becomes is, and I have not studied the specifications for the project manager, but I'm assuming the specifications have to do with uh, the qualifications and experience of doing that type of job. And I think if you think more just broadly about it, uh, what the statute is going to do and the government code statute is going to do is that you have to base your decisions on the qualifications and experience. <coughs> and so qualification experience, I think, can, it says just that, that how does, how does local come into qualifications and experience. It's in judging the way it's kind of the same discussion we were having earlier with the uh, certification process of the of the various individuals because like you said uh, uh, the federal government looks at whether or not uh, one of their factors whether or not they are certified under CMAA, I believe or other believe the other section is PMI. I guess what certain. you're saying is being local doesn't mean that one is more qualified or one is more experienced. That is, if you look at the way the statute is constructed, both 271, 908, and 2054, there is nothing in either one of those statutes about being local. But if we're looking at contractor or any other trade, the contractor like is a totally welder. different. Right. Yes. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're only we're only talking about the the five points on the on the principal office. What, uh, why yeah. are we talking about? Is yeah. that it? Yeah. So yeah. Should, mm -hmm. Which is the last? Point can, you know. So yeah. can we remove it and just Assign get on, on down? On the being road? local, I mean, everybody's got an office here. I mean, I guess the local, you know. Got an well, let's just yeah, let's we'll just get rid of that if if there's no, concern. To, um, some other one, no. <laughs> yeah. Now somehow we're gonna have to draw out local in, in my in my opinion because it, if we if we're looking at cost, if you bring out the firm the furthest away firm because they're the most qualified, you gotta understand that that's gonna be so much more expensive. So there has to be somewhere in this process where we can see where these where people are from. Uh, if we're just gonna not look at an at an expense it's going to be double or triple what we're looking at if somebody's more local I mean, we have to maybe not in the scoring system but we need we need to be able to see that I mean you well, can I have think. firms that are pretty close and one has more local people than than from yeah, way out way outside people. the state they got to mobilize they got to bring other people in they got to find places to live and stuff like that I mean we can't turn a blind eye to that it's going can to be we way include more expensive. a radius in there no yeah. Uh, um, and maybe not in the scoring, but we need to be able to see who the people are. If they're going to have 30, 50 people, you know, on this project, we just need to be able to see where they're from. And, and of course, to, and of course, if they're if they're qualified, I mean, if they're the here and not qualified, I mean, I agree that we can't hire them. It'll be up to the greater. I mean, you, you know, the greater the commission. I just want to make sure that it's part of the information that's provided to us. We can include it in the requirements. So hold on. Well, no, uh, no. no. Uh, just a question. So we're talking about five points. Okay, yeah, I'm saying just get five. rid of that. You yeah. want to get rid of it or do you want to reassign it reassign to another? It. Oh, you reassign if you reassign it. Well, I think it, that was going to be, go ahead. I mean, it's a suggestion. You got 25, 20, 25 on professional qualifications, 25 on experience. You got 20 on relevant experience. You got 20 on understanding of the project. Why not assign the 5 to the 20? Well, so Steve is telling us that we can't 
we can't consider the local. No, I'm taking just the points itself. Not that they're local, but you're putting the five points to the 20. So now you have 25 points on the understanding of the project. That will, yeah, that would lead to them understanding the project, what the demands are going to be, how many people they're going to assign to the project, that kind of stuff. I'm good with it. And then that will even out your initial 25 for experience, qualifications, and 20 for relevant experience. Just saying, if you're going to reassign it, reassign it to item Under, number four. Uh, number four. And that will, balance that out will give us how many points? That will give us the whole... Total 100. 100? No, 25, 25, 25. No, yeah, because 100. you delete it from here. <coughs> but you would add it here. Second page on top, Judge. You're going to go ahead and put it in the Yeah, it'll be item number four. You have 20 points. You're just going to reassign the five points to, there. to number four. Which is the understanding of the project. All other one, all other areas are at 25. From from qualifications to the to the experience. You're going to incorporate four and five. Yeah, just so you have a balanced 100, 100 total points. All right. On the second page, we've got uh, a total of 20, and 10, and 30. The, yes. So we don't include the five. 30 and then 75 is still 105. Yeah, if you move the it, five points, it's still going to be 105. Right. Because right now it's not 105. Oh, okay, still then a just bonus. remove the five points. Yeah, the five. yeah. leave it at 100. Yeah. yeah. Let's do that. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, with these changes, we will advertise this Saturday. Okay. It'll get advertised this Saturday. So. Next item is three uh, A three request and approval and authorization of procurement packet for the purchase of twelve used twenty twelve or twenty thirteen international and or Kenworth tractor trucks and twelve used twenty twelve title and or global vacuum trailers through RFB number twenty sixteen two seventeen SGS for a one time purchase with acquisition and evidence three through properly processed submitted requisition and our purchase order including the re-advertisement of project in the event of no bids received and are rejected and project is still required. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Item B, Precinct 2, 1, approval of work authorization number 3 with an estimated cost of $4,777 as submitted by Millennium Engineers Group under contract number C16. 2070510 to provide geotechnical testing services for Precinct 2, Plana Vista Subdivision Road and Drainage Improvement Project. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. B2, acceptance and approval of work authorization number 7 with an estimated cost of $84,996.09 as submitted by LNG Engineering Engineers for the landscaping an irrigation layout for Precinct 2 Regional Linear Park Project from San Antonio Ridge Road through contract number C15460303. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. 2B, pursuant to contract, current contract with LNG Consultant Engineers, Article 14, a request for approval by engineer to permit the subcontracting of Ergonomic Transportation Solutions, Inc. and B2Z Engineering, LLC, in connection to agreement C15 0460303 for the regional linear park project at precinct two. Motion approved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B3, acceptance and approval to execute the final form of a professional engineering agreement agreement with B2Z engineering for on call professional engineering services for precinct two uh, as a proof of negotiations at Commissioner's Court August 9th, 16, subject to compliance with HB 23 and HB 1295, if applicable. Move for approval. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Item C, Precinct 3, 1, acceptance and approval of construction contract document for Idaho County Precinct Number 3 for the La Jolla Watershed Improvements, South Detention Basin. Uh, commission awarded this bid. Uh, commission's court awarded this bid um, August 9, 2016, to LNG Construction Company, and the total amount of four four million six hundred forty-five thousand nine hundred seventy-five dollars under contract C sixteen one six one zero eight zero nine 
and this one is subject to legal's final review and approval. Move All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Item D, Precinct 4, D1, approval to purchase the following boat. BOMAG single drum vibratory compactor through the county's membership participation with HGAC awarded vendor Anderson Machinery, contract number SM10-14, requisition number 303323 in the total amount of $105,422 for project number 2016-318-D, MEG. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Item 2, approval to purchase the following 2016 Peterbilt 337 grapple brush truck through the county's membership uh, participation with the By Boards Awarded Vendor Rush Truck Center, contract number 40, 43013, requisition number 303344, and the total amount of 160311 33 which includes shipping and one-time administration fee of $400. Project number 2016-318-MEG. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Number three, acceptance and approval of proposals received by H and B Equipment Services, uh, the awarded vendor under Idaho County under Task B by Board, contract 42413, for the purchase of one new Terex skid steer loader at sixty-four thousand forty-two seventy-one. Two new Terex. Oh, that's A. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. B is two new Terex TLB 840 back loader at 73611 and 6 cents, each for the total amount of 147222 and 12 cents. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. No. Aye. Motion carries. C is one new Doosan DL 250TS three loader at 178204 and 10 cents. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. D1 new deuce on TL 250TC three loader, $154,623.62. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. E, budget and management. Item E. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought sorry. that was another. Okay, sorry. <laughs> e, budget and management. <laughs> One. Request and approval of final negotiated agreement, C1647823, with Trappy Software Group, Inc., DBA Asset Works, LLC, for the purposes of structure valuation and insurance appraisal for Idaho County owned real estate properties, buildings. That is, replacements effective 82316 for a period of one year subject to compliance with HV23 and HV1295 and are if applicable. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. This was previously awarded uh, by Commissioner's Court July 1916 under contract C1647823. Okay, now I can go. You get a big plug. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner. 18, open forum. Commissioner, before we go, oh, okay, to, sorry. Before we go to open forum, because we're about 21 minutes past uh, the yeah, we'll schedule worship, can we recess Commissioner's Court, open the open forum, I mean the uh, workshop, then recess the workshop, come back to, uh, to the court? Okay. Is that my motion? Second. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Can we now please reopen the uh, Commissioner's Court? Move for rule. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Jeff. Or thank you, Commissioners. Open forum. We do have. Uh, five participants. As always, I will ask the artist to please respect the time uh, of the speaker at the podium. Our first uh, presenter is Ms. Fern McClary, and I will advise uh, when there is one minute left. All right. The uh, Owls attended <clears throat> a meeting yesterday of the Hidalgo County Grievance Committee. <clears throat> it seemed that Paul Barry L., our current tax assessor collector, does not feel that the position he is running for pays enough. He came before the grievance committee and requested a pay raise from 97500 He wanted 100425 and an auto allowance of $14,000 a year. My question is, if he wins, which I don't think he has anyone running against him now, does it mean that he will refuse to serve because he feels the salary is not sufficient, or is it because he anticipates that the tax increase of the health care district and the new courthouse will leave him earning less in 2017 than he has made in 2016? In my opinion, Mr. Variel does not 
feel the salary is sufficient, he should not run for the office. And this goes for anyone else that running for office. If you don't think it's paid enough, don't run. The tax office needs to open the Hackberry, which is in Precinct 2, uh, tax and car uh, tag office before he or anyone else gets a raise. He has always stated that he would need at least six or seven new employees before he opened his office again. My question, do any of you have relatives, friends, or loved ones who do doesn't already work for the county who might need a job? Please contact the tax office as soon as you can. Also, we went to the Board of Judges on Thursday the 18th of August. We, were, we heard how some people can't get along and can't work with some people. Then we heard how Mr. Buddy Silva was doing a good job, so the Board of Judges voted to him to give him $11,000 raise, and now he's making $140,000 a year. Then we heard from a Mr. Arnold Patrick, who just can't get along with a certain person, but he always gets along with everyone, so the Board gave him $11,000 raise. So now he is also making $140,000 a year. My question is, how much do the uh, people from the juvenile boot camp uh, make? I bet it's not near $140,000 each, and we have seen what they do for these kids. How about these people getting $11,000 raise? I bet they would be happy with just a raise. And while we were there, we heard the bailiff, uh, if they purchased the same weapon as the sheriff's office, the sheriff's office would buy all the ammo for them, for their guns. Sounds like a good deal for everyone all around. Also practical, because if one someone goes down, whether it be an, an officer or the constable or the sheriff goes down, their ammo could be used by another officer or bailiff if needed in the courthouse. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Our next presenter is Leo Santana. Good morning, gentlemen. My name is Leo Santana. I come from the two subdivision, and uh, honestly, I don't know who represents my who the representative of my district. Um, I would like to just could you please keep us in mind that uh, the colonia that I live in is a total mess. It's a dump. Sorry to say, but just keep us in mind. If you could probably do a colonial cleanup because it's just awful. We are. Uh, Where's that at? Where's that? Where's that? To um, Cherokee Lane on Tower and Sioux Road. That one? subdivision. What's the name of the subdivision? Excuse me? What's the name Sioux of the subdivision? State subdivision. The thing is that we're in 2016, and instead of going forward, we're going back. It's a total dump. My wife, I mean, I can honestly say she. She busts her tail off cleaning the, the property. But I mean, we can't, we can't do it all. I mean, you walk around, it's, it's a mess. So please, please keep in mind that we're in 2016 and we're going back with this instead of going forward. I don't know our tax money, where it's going, but please, it's just a dump. It's all. Uh, we submitted an application for the lighting because practically at night you got to go through there with flashlights and your headlights on, full beam. It's dark. So, um, anybody I can talk to, assistant, anybody, no. to keep this going because I mean it comes to the point that it's a total mess. It's really, really bad. Neighbors are just filthy in the alleys. There's no alley. Everybody took over the alley. Case of emergency. The Sika wires running around. I mean, I got little kids. I mean, it's, the neighbors are not helping, but you know, the county also, I would like to ask you guys to keep us in mind. Or the precinct. Thank you. Maybe like a trash batch or something again. Thank you, sir. Commissioner. No. I trash bash or something. Mm -hmm. I will get the information. Judge Commissioners, our next presenter is Juanita, and I apologize for, uh, for the last name, Basorto or Basarto? 
Basurto. Muy buenos días, mi nombre es Juana Basurto, vengo representando a la colonia Huizache, el número 9. Este, eh, queríamos recordarles que este, metimos la petición de para el alumbrado, la luz, y para que nos tomen en cuenta también de la basura, que hay mucho, que tenemos mucha basura acumulados ahí, que no pasan los camiones, y pues o se hace animales por... Por nosotros, por los niños, se hace ratones, cucarachas, nomás para que nos tomen en cuenta. Y eso es todo. Muchas gracias. What, what, what precinct is that on? Uh, this is precinct one. Um, right. They live, actually, Sioux Estates and Wisache number nine are like a, like a T kind of. It's on Cherokee Lane and Broken Arrow. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they, uh, both colonies recently turned in their uh, application, so they're just... Um, for the yeah, for the light. So they just come in and like uh, ask if you can keep them in mind. Um, but also, if, if there's any way that they can uh, schedule or coordinate with somebody to make a colonia cleanup, because since they're yeah, kind we of can connected. do that. Just uh, get a hold of Raúl. He's out there right now. If okay. you need some help, uh, to commissioner, we can help you on the weekends or whatever. With okay. Well, Thanks Great. For okay. Well, then uh, we'll talk to Raúl and then uh, we'll see if um, we can work something out. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Our next presenter is Ms. Opal Billman. Good morning. My name is Opal Billman. Community property belonging to Joe and Opal Billman has been commercialized and stores built and money borrowed from the banks with borrowers using our community property as their collateral. Developers, borrowers, and trespassers were advised not to build on our land. Banks were advised not to place liens on our land. The issue is a takeover of our income producing private property, which is illegal activity. I want the buildings and all trespassers removed because that's the law. I also want liens expunged from our debt-free income-producing community property. I was sued for divorce. A settlement between Joe and me of our property was the only action required. The court determined our community property was excess land with no value and divided a conjectured $650,000, 41% to me and 59% to Joe. The $650,000 was yet to be earned. It did not exist. I appeal this decision to the 13th Appellant Court. The 13th Appellant Court affirmed this settlement with specific instruction that all other property owned by Joe and me remained owned equally by Joe and me. That was it. Nothing else was done. Joe and I still own our community property. The Secretary of State permitted Joe to incorporate our community property. Joe's signature does not convey our community property. The transaction is not legal. My request for information has been answered with, we have no information about these corporations. That's because they do not exist. A deed conveys nothing if the grantor does not have title to the property. Nothing was done. Presently, we have a strip mall on our private property. I want all trespassers in their property removed because that's the law. Also, the city of Mission claiming confusion is encroaching at the boundary line between South John H. Sherry and North John H. Sherry. I want them off our land because it's the law. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Our last presenter is uh, Ramona Casas. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Yeah. I'm Ramona Casas from the Rice Organization. And I'm here this morning to say thank you because we invite you and the commissioner for the precinct two, Mr. Cantu, to be part of the first conference we preparing for families 
at the first conference for emergency preparing for families at the Hidalgo County and the Cameron County. And this conference is to prepare in any case of emergency. And we are expecting to have 200 participants from the colonias. We started invite youth from 14 years and up and parents. And thank you for your support. We also have the Department of the Health, Mr. Olivares, and also Mr. Saldana for emergency management program. So thank you so much because we are expecting through all the support for the county and many different agencies to be there this Saturday, um, August 27. The conference will be 8 to 3 p.m. in Alamo. They be good program for training the families to prepare in any emergency. And hopefully we can save lives and improve the lives of the families of the colonias. And thank you so much for your support. And I hope to see you there. You are invited to be there. And thank you for the support. This is the first conference is preparing at the level of the colonial residents. And we are so happy and proud. We've been working hard to have this uh, conference. And thank you for your support. And uh, I hope to see you there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions for me. But in that, thank you so much. Thank you. Ms. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, pursuant to uh, Section 551071 and 072 of the Texas Government Code, uh, I need a motion to proceed to executive session. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 aye motion carries. We will be in executive session for a short while. All right, we're back in open session, Mr. Guerra. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Under open session 21A, real estate appro uh, acquisition appropriation for Sam, there's no action. 21D, pending under potential litigation, there's no action to be taken. 21C, C3877-16-C, uh, Isao Zuniga Gallegos versus Hidalgo County, Texas, uh, Hidalgo County Drainage District at all. Judge Commissioners, I'd like to refer to item 20A, B, 20A and B. 20A, request an exemption from competitive bid requirements under Texas Local Government Code, Section 262-024A, for professional service for the provision of legal services representation in connection with litigation. Move for approval. Second. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carried. Item 20B, requesting engagement with the firm of Atlas, Hall, and Rodriguez for the provision of legal services <coughs> representation in connection with litigation and authority to submit a letter of engagement. Again, sub, uh, this would be with subject to compliance with House Bill 1295. This is specific to uh, item 21C under open session, C3877-16-C, Estados <laughs> Unidos Gallegos versus Hidalgo County, Texas, Hidalgo County, Grand Sister, et al. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 21D, C0929-12-F, Johnny Partain versus Eddie Guetta, Precinct 4 Constable, et al. Judge Commissioners, I'd like... Uh, for the court to entertain a motion uh, in compliance with an order. With, it, uh, with an order uh, in this particular case for the County of Hidalgo uh, to, to uh, issue a check in the amount of $540.75 uh, uh, regarding uh, pallet uh, costs. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge Commissioners, there's no uh, uh, there's uh, no action on 22 and 23. We have adjourned. When is that? We uh, we will be having Commissioners Court next week, Tuesday. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs>